Hi guys, welcome to my podcast series. You are currently listening to episode 1 titled Is Kalo the Beginning? Feel free to engage in the comment section, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy the episode. Introduce yourself, you know, your name, what do you do, and also you can also talk about your podcast if you want to. Uh, Ish, my, my podcast. <laughs> The one that I haven't released an episode since March. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I haven't because obviously this year has been incredibly busy. But thank you so much for having me on. Um, to everyone that's listening, uh, my name is Rory Sang Sajani. Uh, I currently work at a nonprofit company called Makers Value Partnership. Um, and I, this year, I am currently embarking on my master's. Well, I'm currently embarking, yeah towards my master's degree in urban management. Um, I have a background in urban planning, uh, having graduated from the University of the Vatrashant. And yeah, that's just me um, explaining myself in a nutshell. Um, So, I mean, obviously there's a lot of um, development and growth within the urban realm and urban sector, uh, but um, the topic of gentrification is always interesting, always yeah. um, different perspectives, and I'm looking forward to Iskal or the beginning, yeah. and yeah, <laughs> taking it from taking it forward from here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Very accomplished man. <laughs> so when I say the word gentrification, what are the first five words that come to your mind? Like just off the top of your head. When I Personally, when you sent me the questions, I really had to think about it. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, you kind of feel like you, you, you're repeating and repeat the words or say mm-hmm. the same word, but in a different way. Yeah. But when I think about gentrification, uh, the first five words that really come to my head are cleanliness, development, sustainability, um, management and livability Uh, that's what comes to my head when i think of gentrification Um, but i guess it's also dependent on which context we're looking at it and how we apply each of the five things in those different contexts yeah definitely What, what i find interesting is that you said a lot of your the words that you like thought of were like similar like it was almost like you were repeating certain ideas and that's I think that's one of the biggest things I'm facing like with this whole topic is that everything just seems so repetitive and I I feel like like whether it's the use of like words itself like other words to describe gentrification or that relate to gentrification just yeah just like like a lot of things just feel repetitive when I'm like researching around the topic so I find that interesting that you actually said that oh no definitely Mm -hmm. I mean if I had to ask you what's the difference between urban urban regeneration and gentrification what would you say (laughs) all these terms (laughs) all these terms to an extent are more or less similar it just depends on how you how you apply it yeah um so I I get your confusion I I also find myself really I'm trying to figure out what does, you know, how does urban development differ from urban, well, from regeneration and how does that differ from gentrification and how are all of them like the same? So gentrification is just one of the, the, one of the many tools that we, I suppose, apply in our profession, whether it be urban design, urban planning, urban management um, and it's just really how do you then apply it within those certain disciplines yeah that's true that's true um so just on that like on that topic um right now like there's so many diff- like definitions that for like gentrification and it's really um i think i just feel like it's really determined on like your perspective, like what perspective you're actually looking at it from. So like, I know like the term gentrification stemmed from um, a sociologist, her name was Ruth Glass, and she 
said, it's basically the transformation of a poor neighborhood in cities by the process of middle or upper income groups buying properties in such neighborhoods and upgrading them. And to a certain degree, I, I do feel like this is the correct term, but I mean, I just feel like there's just so many different elements to to the like the term gentrification that I feel like this definition is not really substantial I don't know but like I just want to hear from you if I were to ask you to define gentrification what would you say it really just depends on how you how you perceive gentrification and gentrification is just literally the ability to um improve a neighborhood um through different partners yeah how that how that improvement happens is up to them um because i think there are many instances where gentrification does work maybe or well, not let me not say maybe there are instances where gentrification works i think gentrification more or less requires people it requires one person to really believe in whatever they're doing and to improve one area and then like a domino effect you know so let's say for example there's a rundown area and i come in and i buy and and i refurbish the one building and then one sees oh very sung is doing this then someone comes in and does that yeah and then eventually that area results into kicking out i think that's how gentrification usually occurred in most instances but i think with the victoria yards example um a lot of people are always in awe when they like look at victoria yards it's literally i could say it's superimposed and when i mean it's superimposed i'm talking about the fact that when you actually look at victoria yards and its actual surroundings it's crazy yeah is that a good thing or is it a bad thing i mean <laughs> where victoria yards is um in bertrams or yeah it's literally your bertrams is tense dude i i work there i know how it's like yeah. the community is it's 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 really run down it's just an example of how inner cities have failed um remarkably due to many people leaving um people not being able to well let me in the in the south african context yeah. um in terms of people leaving white flight and poor um oh let me not say poor people but um it has given people with uh less income the opportunity to stay in those areas and and because they don't have enough monies to pay taxes it's just resulted in these areas being run down yeah. but going back to the the example of victoria yards Victoria Yards is really just superimposed in the neighborhood. Well, let me rather say it's improvement and development has made it seem to be superimposed because when you walk in there, it is, it's ridiculous. Like it's crazy because it's just so nice. Like there's so many veggies growing and mm -hmm. like the area, like Victoria Yards just looks clean. But as soon as you go out, it's just like, whoa, what's it's going on here? But now going back to the whole good or bad thing, like I had said in originally, gentrification is usually probably caused by people, one person taking that leap of faith and developing and hoping that other people see what he's doing and they join in and they therefore gentrify the whole place. You said something really interesting. I've never thought of it as it's essentially about someone having a vision and hoping other people just hop onto it. Like it's it's really yeah, I, I didn't. I really didn't think of that because, like, now that you say it, it makes me think of like Maboneng and other places, and kind of makes sense. Of, like, yeah, everything is like makes sense. Now. Oh, 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 definitely, it really does. Um, I think, you know, the only problem I suppose is then just yeah. What what as you what what do you as a person want to achieve? What do you really want to do? Yeah. And however, in most instances, um, 
unfortunately, gentrification is really more tailored towards rich individuals where yeah. they just want to, you know, they see an area that's nice and believe that it can be, it's not utilizing its, its, its capabilities and they just buy and, and think. Yeah. Uh, and, and and clean it up and do whatever. So it really just depends on um, what you're trying to achieve and who you're working with and whose interests you really are serving. Yeah, that's true. Which takes me back to like how like this whole concept of gentrification like came about. So like I've been doing like research and as I mentioned, like there's just so many people have these ideas of how it could have come about. Like some people say, um, which I kind of talk about in my next episode with this whole global north and global south and, you know, certain um, countries having more power and they have more influence on other countries. And because of that, this whole concept kind of like trickled down because of that um, globalization and other states because of colonization which for me I feel like it is an option because with the whole um with urban planning like a lot of our planning policies and uh, make like yeah planning policies and what we implement in like most of the global south like like South Africa, for example, is because we were colonized and we've taken like the British planning like ideologies and we we try to implement them here and you know some worked, some didn't, most didn't, but <laughs> that's a story for another day. And then others say it's like it's just mainly because of like disinvestment. What happened is that there were people staying in an area, they moved out because of whatever reasons and that area just lost its value and for like a developer or whoever, it's, it's an opportunity to bring the, like life back into the space. So like, I don't know, from you, um, like what do you think? Cause like, I'm not disputing anything. Uh, like what, what do you think like on, from your side? Well, all of the options are valid. However, I would nudge more towards the whole. I would I'd nudge more towards the neoliberal, um, neoliberal and globalization. Mm-hmm. Why is that? More, more or less, more neoliberal. And the reason why is because I think you have to think that between you know the late the nineteen eighties. Yeah. Uh, moving towards the 1990s, there was this whole new development of moving away from more Keynesian welfareist governance, which it was approach which was tailored towards more benefiting the state doing everything and, you know, moving towards more decentralization. Yeah. And in that case, moving away from de- decentralization um, you, you find the local state has to do most of the work, right? Yeah. But in that instance, in, in throughout all that period and what's happening, you know, impact of neoliberal, the neoliberal agenda, decentralized, decentralization of the state has also moved towards new public management and varying different, varying urban governance approaches which are tailored towards improving the um, city's um, capabilities and I think within those urban governance approaches and the implementation of urban management which is what I'm studying you, you start to find that cities are now moving away from firstly cities are becoming more autonomous they're able to make their own decisions and at the same time they're also making decisions which are centered around economic growth. And that is by urban governance approaches, 
and urban management, which gives these cities a part, the power to make their own decisions um, and do whatever they want. And because of that, cities have realized that, and it, it's no, it's no, it's no, it's not anything that is in common, but cities across the world, not only in South Africa, their inner cities have experienced a lot of flight because of the development of shopping centers on the outer skirts of the city. You know, people are now moving towards malls. They don't want to be in the inner city. So there had to be ways in which they could bring people back. And gentrification is just one of those ways where because of this idea of, um, you know, deterioration of cities, um, using tools such as urban management, which you have to work with different stakeholders in cleaning up the city. Yeah. Gentrification is just one of those tools where you're trying to bring everyone together in, in finding, you know, and cleaning up, bringing people back. And that's why in, in most cases, in man, I really don't think that people that gentrify yeah. don't care because they're doing what the city is mandating them to do. And the reason why I'm saying what the city is mandating them to do is because they've probably been told that, listen, man, we really need you guys to clean up the city and you need to do X, Y, or rather, you know, maybe a city has a vision of uh, inner city regeneration or whatever. Yeah. And they believe that and they are willing to incentivize people in doing this. And I guess in most instances in Nan, cities don't really have the, tr- the, 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 the autonomy in really making a decision that would benefit the greater good. I think the money is where it's at. And if the money and if and if if investors are gonna regenerate and gentrify and it contributes to rates and taxes, then who are the people that were staying there that weren't doing any of that? Who are they? They might as well just kick them out, you know. So yeah, I mean, in and itself, then what solidifies it is then you could say that, you know, as implementing and inheriting a a colonial planning system which the British left for us is what continues to then sustain it and I guess that's just one of my gripes with planning and that's why I really don't well not maybe not say it's my gripe but essentially it's quite difficult to be gentrification when the very same system allows it to occur yeah if it makes sense yeah I hear what you say so yeah, that it's just literally that's that's my understanding. It's 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 a mix of all those factors. So yeah, neoliberalism, neo neo neoliberal. What is it? Neoliberalism and globalization <laughs> is what causes it, and uh, colonialization, um, our colonial inadvertent commas planning system yeah. is what sustains it. Um. So yeah. And you, you actually said something interesting. Uh, you said, you made a, a remark about, it's all about where the money is at, right? And which brings me to my next point, because I want to like understand, would you say like gentrification is like a disaster in our time? And why I picked up on your point, um, it's all about where the money is at, right? Um because of that reason, like I, I essentially said this whole like idea of gentrification can be regarded as a disaster in our time because it thrives off this, you know, this um, idea of where, where the money is, wherever the money is, you know, it's all about the money. I, that's, that's just my opinion when it comes to gentrification. It's all about serving those that have the money and once the project has been um like once the the project is done and those that come in within that space are the people with money it's not really catered for 
anybody else. It's catered for a certain group of people that actually have money. And um, I just feel like, I don't know if it's just me, but having that kind of mindset has just really brought a lot of problems in countries mm -hmm. all over. Or maybe not all over, but maybe in certain countries. I know in our country, it definitely has your views. Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Do you think planning serves the poor? <laughs> no, I'm just asking. Like, do you um, think so? To be honest, man. I, I don't I don't I don't think so. Don't so do you do you see essentially listen man urban planning as a as a profession as a tool mm -hmm. is very is very clinical like if done with the correct amount of power can do a lot of things I mean look at our country yeah this very same profession that we are trying to give better lives is the same profession that really destroyed a lot of lives. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. is it safe to say then that urban planning is a disaster? No, not, not necessarily. Same with gentrification then. I think the the the, the thing with 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 the thing um the thing that underpins how these things are carried out is the the the, the aspect that, which underpins gentrification is how is it carried out and it kind of goes back to what i was saying back in the beginning yeah i think it's very wrong to say that gentrification is a disaster i don't think it is a disaster there are instances which have been disasters but overall the yeah. concept really shouldn't be identified as a disaster. It's it's intended to do good. Same way planning was intended to do good. Addressing industrial revolution, we have a garden city model that's bringing environmental sustainability, livability, you know, all those nice terms, you know, yeah. making us live lavish. <laughs> and at the same time, you know, you have urban planning in the South African context, which was used to literally, um, um, you know, put people in in yeah, in, in townships, yeah, you know, divide yeah. using whole natural features to separate people, you know, yeah, um, and it's yeah. actually pretty, um, and and last week when all the riots were happening, <laughs> it's it's actually pretty dark, but. There was a tweet that came that one person tweeted and they were like, shout out to like things, shout out to the group areas act and um, oh, wow. about that special <laughs> planning because in their, their neighborhoods didn't experience any looting or whatever, you know? Wow. So do you see these kind of things? Yeah. It, it's really, it really is on a, it's really based on the context. It's, it's really context based, man. Like, yeah it really is in that case so yes there have been it's so yes so yes gentrification isn't a disaster there have been instances where it has been a disaster mm. it's all about how it's carried out it's all about how do people come together and work with one another in addressing the urban challenges is gentrification also one of the other ways i would like to say wait hold on i need to think about this because obviously <laughs> there's because i'm actually thinking about the last time where we said what's the difference between urban renewal rege regeneration all that kind of stuff yeah but yeah all i'm all i'm trying to emphasize is how it's done and i i wouldn't say it's 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 um a disaster it really isn't you have to be open-minded to to understand how gentrification really works and yeah. what it can achieve yeah so yeah that's 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 what i would like to say i like that you're open-minded a lot of people are not open-minded about this whole concept. but i can i i won't lie 
Yeah. Um, personally, from my perspective, I really just think that um, as people, we kind of have to, um, you know, break down the, the stereotype. I mean, like for me, I know um, for my research, I'm doing a, a topic that really isn't, that's always been seen in a bad light. And you kind of have to really immerse yourself in various situations for you to understand. Mm. I think um, you can't always just consume all the academic literature that's there and say, oh, yes, gentrification is bad. Personally, you know, if I had my way, yeah, uh, if I had my way, I really <laughs> would gentrify a lot of places. And it's not, it's because personally, I really just see as an urban practitioner the the, the potential that an area has. Yeah. How yeah. I intend to achieve that potential. It's up to me and God, but yeah, man, I would just really, um, yeah. But yeah, we're here right now. So <laughs> <laughs> let's see how this goes. But yes, it's more or less along the lines of, of just really understanding that it's very difficult right now, especially because in a world like that we live in right now, anything that you do differently is essentially shunned upon. Okay. Yeah. If you're not, because in most instances, then none, a lot of cities are now trying to be competitive. How do you become competitive? You have to make sure that you have pristine spaces. Your, your cities are clean. They, they, mm -hmm. they provide the best opportunities for businesses to thrive. Yeah. Right. That's the same way why, their city improvement districts, which is my my research thing, you yeah. see. So, in 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 instances, cities are always going to provide these services so that businesses can thrive. Because in the end, we all want economic growth. Mm, you know. True. So, I mean, what what type of economic growth we're looking at? I don't know. That's up to whatever the city is trying to achieve. Yeah. But at the same time that's that's just what it's all about and i don't think it's going to be it's going to be quite difficult for that narrative to change it really is i i don't see because i don't see cities rather welfareist approaches you know feel like projects you know giving people money that kind of drains the state man and the state is now a means in making its own money and yeah. they want to make their own money they want to do their own projects so it, it's it's tough man it really is tough you just really have to do it and <laughs> yeah man that's like literally the the only thing i can say so it's just about the interest man like what yeah. do you really trying to achieve how you want to achieve it i mean that's up to whoever the the the, the urban developer is or and what they want to do it's it's a really layered discussion man but yeah if i if i were to gentrify man i i really knowing what i've learned in my profession and what i'm what we are supposed to the 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 ethical value yeah. I would try my best to incorporate everyone, knowing well that not many people will, that some people won't be able to benefit. So, mm. yeah, that's it, man. And I think that goes the same with all urban planning projects, yeah. like any any engineering profession. When you have to do something, someone's going to lose out. And, and that's just the way it is, man. How they lose out depending on how you intend your vision or your project to uh in, carry out and yeah i hear you man i hear you it's just yeah with this i feel like it this question is also very dependent on an individual because yeah some people are just really view like gentrification as like a disaster in our time and other people will be like but we, it's like it's something that needs to be done in order for a kind like 
for an, like a country to just grow and you know compete with the elite essentially but yeah man um i really enjoyed having you on my podcast man i really enjoyed this conversation that we just had it was actually really fun and um yeah i'm just wishing you all the best with your master's degree and anything else going forward thank you so much Roy. um thank you so much as well i i really appreciate it um yeah hopefully it's a, a better end to the year and you're yeah, just finishing off this degree and being done for quite some time now because yeah i didn't see myself going back now it's, it's been quite tough this year thanks rory it's a pleasure Kika. bye bye